All right, what is up, YouTube? The Mummy Dust here, back with a video after a long break. I apologize about that. July was a very busy month. I did Pokemon Go Fest Chicago and Pokemon Go Fest Dortmund. I also tried to qualify for the World Championship at Chicago. Um, Rainbow Cup was not my favorite cup, so I did not do as well as I would have liked. I did go four and two. And Valor Ash actually won my qualifier, uh, so they had to do like a triple tiebreaker for second place. Just missed the cut on that one. So uh, I'm very happy to move on to Jungle Cup, and we're going to go on and see how I did in that cup. So my team consisted of Venusaur with Vine Whip, Sludge Bomb, and Frenzy Plant, Lantern with Water Gun, Hydro Pump, and Thunderbolt. Fortress with Bug Bite, Heavy Slam, and Earthquake. Vigoroth with Counter, Body Slam, Bulldoze. King of the Jungle Cup right there, Vigoroth. Super important. We'll go over that in a little bit. And then Noctowl, Wing Attack, Sky Attack, and Psychic. And Magnezone with Spark, Wild Charge, and Flash Cannon. So we're going to go a couple, over a couple of my Stranger Picks, Magnezone over, uh, you know, like Alolan Graveler, you know, any of the Rock Boys. Uh, very resistant to Wigglytuff, very good against Noctowl, the Hard Vigoroth flying counters, and um, yeah, very good against Wigglytuff, which is now very important in the meta. Same with Venusaur, Venusaur handles Wigglytuff as a good counter for Vigoroth. Uh, and Lantern, Fortress, very good finishers, especially if they have one shield. Also use Fortress for um, like a, a living shield, basically. So uh, one of my main strategies was to lead with Vigoroth, switch to Fortress if need be, and then uh, have Lantern or Vigoroth left with you know two shields after trying to burn a couple of their shields. So that was my main strategy. Also to lead Venusaur um, for people who I thought was going to lead like Vigoroth or something that would, you know, lose the Venusaur, um, you know, Lantern possibly, things like that, um, Wigglytuff as well. So uh, very, very solid lineup, uh, very meta-centric. Um, I did mean to bring Wigglytuff instead of Noctowl uh, to try and bait out some of the Fortress uh, <laughs> leads, but unfortunately, uh, I did not do that. I actually did not use Noctowl, I believe, the entire tournament. So my two lineups were Vigoroth, Fortress, Lantern, Venusaur, Vigoroth, and Magnezone. So we're going to go ahead and go straight into some of the battles here. My first battle was against Anne Max. Anne Max's team is very meta centric. She has Beedrill and Alolan Graveler on her team instead of Magnezone. And uh, what do I have that's different? Fortress. So she leads with Venusaur, obviously in a bad situation there. So I am going to switch into Fortress. And Fortress is the lawnmower that it is, it mows the grass. She takes a very long time to switch there. So I was able to build up a bunch of energy. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, this was the new mechanic for me. So there were a couple of them where I was like, oh crap, I did not practice that enough. Um, but we do burn the first shield and hopefully we can burn a second shield here. Um, we are not going to shield this. I believe it's either, oh, we are going to shield. Wow, I don't remember why I shielded that. I, I should not have shielded that. I think I was just trying to make sure that I could burn both the shields or take out the fort or the lantern with my fortress. So here we go again. Very very bad mechanics. <laughs> um, I promise. I promise they get better. Uh, so this was a remote tournament, so it did take place over multiple days. So I was able to get better at the mechanics. So here we're definitely not going to shield. We burn both the shields, which is exactly what we wanted to do. And then we're going to come in with our lantern and just take this out. Eventually. <laughs> so you do want to run water gun on your lantern. It's very good. Very, very, very bad at electric moves. I apologize about that. Um, very painful to watch. I promise it does get better so able to take out the lantern getting ready to switch because I know it's probably gonna be a hard counter 
I was not able to switch fast enough, so I am going to have to burn my shield here. Uh, and we're going to switch into Vigoroth. Vigoroth now actually has the advantage on the Venusaur, uh, simply because it burned most of its energy there. So it's not going to be able to one-hit me with Frenzy Plant here. It'll become, it'll get very close, uh, but we are able to get to the Body Slam. Do overcharge a little bit to make sure that I have a Body Slam ready for the next Pokemon that comes in, and I'm much better at doing the normal type animation. So now we're going to make sure we have a Body Slam ready for their Vigoroth. Body Slam it. And then we are going to try to switch, I believe, as soon as possible. Uh, takes it out anyways. But Lantern hopefully can get to this Thunderbolt before we get killed. Um, probably would have died if she built up to Bulldoze instead of doing Body Slam. So I am able to get to the Thunderbolt just before the Body Slam and take Game 1 even though I cannot hit any of those little electric balls. <laughs> so here we go. Take game one. And um, game two, I'm going to go ahead and use the Venusaur strategy. So you can see kind of some of the stuff I um, <laughs> battle with General Great League. Uh, so... <laughs> Thinking about using the same team again because it won, but I am going to try out this other method with Venusaur, Fortress, and Magnezone. So Venusaur, obviously strong against Lantern, Alolan Graveler, and Vigoroth. So three out of the six Pokemon. We lead a mirror match. I'm very confident in my mirror match skills, uh, especially against... Um, you know, somebody who I've already, you know, battled against before. So we're just going to wait for a piggyback opportunity. And eventually it does not come. So I think I just, once I hit two bodies or two, two sludge bobs, I'm going to use both of them. So there's one and there's two. So we got both the sludge bombs off. So now we're either now that both shields are burnt, we are going to um, take this sludge bomb so that we have a two shield advantage against whatever Pokemon's coming in. No, we're actually going to shield one and then switch. Try to switch. Doesn't work. I apologize. I don't remember everything that I did but we are able to reach the other sludge wave faster faster than them uh, because we did overcharge over tap I apologize so we're able to take the Venusaur nope <laughs> lose So down goes our Venusaur. We're going to bring in Vigoroth, farm that up a couple times, and then obviously get the switch window because, you know, that always happens, right? And then it goes away, realize it's Beedrill, I should have just switched anyways, um, but I did actually switch in at a better opportunity because it went to go use a charge move, and we're going to take this. It does nothing to Magnezone, and we're just going to charge up here. And since the Vigoroth has no shields, we are going to be able to hit a wild charge. Still can't get those electric little balls. If I would have hit excellent there, it would have done a lot better. But we are just going to let this Vigoroth take out the Magnezone at this point. We are going to build up a bunch of energy on our Vigoroth against this one because we do have the one shield. So we're just going to build up. Luckily avoid a body slam. Probably over tapping there uh, and then Beedrill comes in and we got two body slams loaded up so even though Beedrill is a good counter against Vigoroth like in an open uh, with the one shield advantage obviously we're gonna take this uh, as well as we've built up two body slams before it comes in so this is why Vigoroth is so dangerous if you let it get on a roll uh, even a fairly good counter will lose to the Vigoroth so we are able to take match number one 
and I apologize ahead of time about match number two. I got so excited and nervous that I did not take a screenshot of the team and I did not record the second battle. So this is the first battle that we did against Pika Magicla. Sorry, I probably slaughtered that name. <clears throat> but we are going to lead with Lantern because she had a really heavy flying team. Um, so Lantern was a really good matchup. So we are going to be able to farm up this Noctowl for energy. Switches into Vigoroth. We switch to our Vigoroth. And this is where it gets very, very, very hard to beat Vigoroth because hers is built up so much. Um, but... For whatever reason, she did not go for the body slam right away. So I think she was trying to build up to two and hit me with two at once. Um, at this point, I know my lantern can take out the Noctowl with no shield, and I'm very fortress that or very confident that my fortress can take out whatever her third Pokemon is with no shield as well. It's probably a lantern. So, we are going to try and farm this thing up. Unfortunately, with one health left, she gets the body slam off. So, we're just going to go ahead and bring in Lantern here and finish this thing off and build up a little bit more energy. And then... <clears throat> see what the third Pokemon is so it is Lantern so I was correct um, predicting what their team is is very important see here we got a little bit better excellent even see got a little bit better just one day so I'm gonna switch to Fortress here um, and try and take out the Lantern because I know her last Pokemon is Noctowl so we get hit with a Thunderbolt and then we are going to be able to get to a heavy slam, hit this with a heavy slam, eventually. <laughs> I don't know why I waited that long. Steel is a very easy move, so if you guys are new to the PvP uh, Fruit Ninja style, Steel is pretty easy. Also ran Heavy Slam because Heavy Slam did pretty much the similar damage to the Flyers as Rock Tomb did. And then I obviously ran Earthquake for the Lantern. So here I almost make a mistake. Um, you'll see in a second here. <laughs> but we are going to be able to get to the Thunderbolt and hopefully get an Excellent again. Nope, I missed two. So we're definitely not going to get Excellent. But we get Great. And it might have been, well, it didn't matter. But I thought that the lantern was dead, so I kind of looked away from the screen and tapped back twice. <laughs> so we're going to keep a long story short for game number two. Uh, I won with one HP. I think using a lantern against a Venusaur. It was so close. So I won game two and match two. Uh, sorry, I don't have the video game, or I'm sorry, game one of match three. Uh, my opponent here has Dustox, Noctowl, Alolan Golem, and Beedrill. So Lantern is a very good thing to bring here, as well as Noctowl. Um, obviously, my opponent's probably going to bring Venusaur, so we do have to watch out for that. So probably Venusaur. Vigoroth and any of those other three, but all three of those lose to Lantern. Um, and then four of them, three of them also lose to Magnazone. So we're waiting here for Hercalicious to pick their team. And then we're going to go straight into the battles here. Eventually takes a little while sometimes people like to look at this screen here so actually the screen to the left is the most important thing you can possibly look at um, it's actually the most important part of the battle so I do choose lantern probably 
uh, got out predicted here because they knew that I was going to pick Lantern because their team has four things weak to Lantern. Um, so switch to Fortress, and this is where maybe Rock Tomb would have been better, but I think it gets shielded anyways. So the Venusaur has also built up some energy, which is very dangerous against me. Um, and there goes the Heavy Slam. If I had Rock Tomb, it might have done a little bit more damage, but uh, still ends up working out. So I am going to shield the Sky Attack here because the Sky Attack does a ton of damage, and I should be able to get to this second Heavy Slam just before their Sky Attack. Or not. So here comes the Sky Attack. Basically wasted a shield. Should not have done that. Um, well, actually, I do get to the Heavy Slam, so it ended up working out. But realistically, I shouldn't have shielded that first Sky Attack. I should have just let the Fortress go down and save both of my shields. Um, but we are going to bring in our Vigoroth now to farm the crap out of this Noctowl. Just waiting a little bit for the Switch Timer, even though I didn't believe I had to. <laughs> and I actually didn't bring Vigoroth in. Why? I don't... No, I should have. Because now my Vigoroth is going to lose to this Venusaur. Because the Venusaur has a bunch of energy built up. And I knew this, but did not think about it. And I definitely got beat. So I do lose this game. Um, probably should have switched the Vigoroth against the Noctowl. Uh, and then I would have had more energy to ch deal with the Venusaur. But you live and you learn. The next battle is the most important one. So uh, you do want to learn from your last battle. But you do really need to know that the next battle is your most important battle. You can't do anything about your loss. You can learn from it. Um, so Vigoroth comes in and yeah. And the Venusaur is still alive. So here I used Hydro Pump for what reason? I could not tell you. <laughs> I probably should have let it go like a great and then tried to build up some energy. But Vigoroth just gets the body slam so fast I probably would have lost either way. So we are going to... Yeah, I might have been able to. We'll see if this Venusaur has... Yeah, or Noctowl. <sighs> wow. So yeah, lose to the Noctowl, I should have switched the Vigoroth in on and killed. So, live and learn. Game number two, I am going to switch things up a little bit. I could have ran the same team. Uh, probably should have ran the same team. Uh, just because I could have played better there and won the matchup. But we're going to see what happens here. Um, doubt that Venusaur is led twice in a row. So Noctowl is led. Not in a favorable position again. But this is the thing that's so good about Vigoroth. So I am going to tap. I thought I tapped a couple times. But we're going to switch Vigoroth in onto the Noctowl. Um, and we are going to shield this first Sky Attack. Because we are going to have a huge advantage on whatever gets brought in. So we're going to have at least one Body Slam built up already. So then we can build up to two on their Vigoroth. So they're either going to have to burn both shields or they are going to have to let the Vigoroth go down, which is not something anybody likes to see happen. Um, so their, their Vigoroth gets hit. Obviously, I am going to shield here because I have another Body Slam built up. So... If self piggy vacuum would have been a thing still, I think they hit the button at the same time as me. That's why I had to burn a shield. So if I would have just body slammed a little bit sooner, I would have been okay. But here we're going to be able to farm up the Vigoroth and have another body slam ready to go for whatever else comes in and possibly get to a third one before their charge attack. So body slam the Venusaur. And we're going to get to another one just before our Vigoroth dies. So there we go. I was over tapping quite a bit. Uh, so I'm trying to learn how to under tap. It's very difficult uh, to master. Um, but 
I am working on it. I feel like I'm getting better. So that's a step forward in the right direction. So we're obviously going to bring in uh, our Venusaur here because their Vigoroth is already dead. And we should be able to get to our charge move before them because they just used all of their energy. Um, and we did have that one tap from the first game, so um, probably should have Frenzy Planted there because it was in range. But just to be safe, I built up to the Sludge Bomb anyways. So there, we're able to take out the Venusaur. And the last Pokemon is Noctowl. So do we get to a Sludge Bomb? We do. So it looked like I was over-tapping there again. But... And I only get a great. So that kind of sucks. Uh, and then our last Pokemon is... Magnezone. So... The Noctowl is obviously not going to be able to win against Magnezone. Psychic, Sky Attack, neither of them are going to do anything. Uh, and we're just going to be able to take the Noctowl out. So the good thing about Magnezone is Magnezone, like Lantern, um, is a very good finisher. Most people only bring their Vigoroth that can beat the Magnezone very easily. So... If you take out their Vigoroth, Magnezone's kind of free to, you know, finish the game for you. So here we're going to go into game three. And I am going to lead Vigoroth this time against Dustox. Uh, so it was a good thing I did not lead with my Venusaur. Um, so I feel like the Confusion users don't really do too much to Vigoroth. Um, Dustox especially, it seemed like it just did not do a bunch of damage. Ven Venomoth seems like it did more, but we're going to go ahead and duck into the fortress here. Um, and take this charge attack. Which is not going to really do anything to fortress, so... Um, and then we're going to be able to build up some more energy on the Venomoth. I'm not sure why they stayed in. I'm sorry. That's the Dustox. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly why they stayed in, but obviously I'm not going to burn any shields here. I'm basically just using this fortress uh, as a shield itself, and I'm going to try and build up a little bit of energy. Seems like it's just taking forever. Um, I figured I could just take it out with fast attacks. So we are going to shield here because we're going to be able to have two charge attacks or an earthquake um, to burn a shield on whatever's going to come in. So there we take it out. We have a ton of energy built up. And we're almost ready to switch. So in comes Vigoroth. We're going to do a couple heavy slams. Um, and then we're going to switch out here. So there we go. Burn shield. Hopefully we're going to be able to burn another shield. Or do a decent chunk of damage with this heavy slam here. So there it does a decent chunk. And then we're going to switch. Basically to save the Vigoroth as a... I'm sorry. The Fortress as a human... Uh, or living shield for later in the game if we need it. So we're going to body slam their Vigoroth. And I'm just going to let this Vigoroth die this time because um, they have a bunch of built up energy. So um, it would have been useless if I shielded. Then it would have basically taken it out. So Fortress, I'm sorry, Lantern here is going to take a Body Slam or two and be okay because it doesn't really do too much to uh, Lantern. Now we have a Shield left, we have a Fortress left, and we have Venusaur. So this actually happened a lot more than what you, th you would think that it would, um, where... The game kind of ended with Lantern with one shield versus a Venusaur with no shield. So we're going to try and build up here to, I think, two Thunderbolts. Um, not sure, actually, but I'm going to switch into Fortress here to kind of use it as a human shield. Living shield, it's not a human. Pokemon shield. We're going to use it as a Pokemon shield to take this Sludge Bomb. So... There you go. There's a way to get three shields. Save a Pokemon. And this is super close. So I was that close. 
to not winning that match. Uh, and here we're going to go against Werewolf. Werewolf is a very, very good competitor. He does have Wigglytuff on his team, which is very good for me because I have all sorts of counters for Wigglytuff. I have Fortress and Venusaur and um, Magnezone. Um, but game one is going to be a Venusaur versus my Vigoroth. Everybody like to lead Venusaur against me. I'm um, not sure exactly why, just probably because I had Lantern on my team. And since their team was susceptible to Lantern... Uh, I felt like they did it. So here is the, <laughs> I don't know if you want to call it patented, but the strategy that Hero Vange um, talked about using where you duck into the fortress uh, and make it absorb a charge move. So the Venusaur now has no energy. The fortress is going to be able to get at least one charge move off on this Vigoroth and then we are going to be able to bring in our own Vigoroth here in a second. And it's going to have two shields. Or we can bring Vigoroth back out, I'm sorry. So we almost get to a second Heavy Slam. Not quite though. So we're going to go ahead and come in with our Vigoroth <laughs> and we're gonna double shield here um, to to burn the final shield I don't, don't remember if I double shield or not I think I do yep double shield so we're gonna double shield and we're gonna be able to take out their Vigoroth I don't know if they're over tapping or what. I felt like they definitely should have got a body slam off on me, but they didn't, so I'll take it. And we're going to hit the body slam on the Venusaur. Remember, this Venusaur has no energy because it used its charge move on our fortress, so we are going to be able to get to this other body slam um, definitely before their frenzy plant. So. If you can remember, you know, what happened, how much energy it can have. There's a lot of things that happen in battles, uh, so it's hard to remember. But we are going to use Body Slam. I was trying to build up to Bulldoze, and I realized that I was not going to get it. So we use this Body Slam before it goes down, and then we're going to switch into our Lantern uh, just to save it from... I'm sorry, save from their lantern getting some more charge energy. So there it uses Thunderbolt at this point. I know I'm pretty much in the clear and I'm gonna win this match. So we're gonna be able to hit it with their thun my Thunderbolt. And look at that, I'm getting much better at those, hitting those little yellow balls. Fruit Ninja style and take out their lantern. So, game two, we're going to go ahead and use the Venusaur. Oh. We're going to make sure they're ready. <laughs> we're going to use Venusaur, Magnezone, and Fortress. Venusaur, Magnezone, Vigoroth. There we go. I can speak English. I know I can. <laughs> All right. So, they lead with Wigglytuff, which is a very good matchup for us. They're going to have to burn both their shields, and they might not win this matchup. So what's going to happen here is the Wigglytuff is going to do a little bit of damage and then duck out. They're going to bring in Venusaur. Venusaur, obviously weak to its own attack, Sludge Bomb. So the message came, soon, came through a little bit later, but obviously they were ready to go. Um, so we are going to shield here. And then we're going to send in our Sludge Bomb. Actually, switch. We're going to save our Sludge Bomb. Frenzy Plant for later. We're going to switch into Magnezone. Since they are switch locked, Magnezone is not going to take any damage from either move that Venusaur does. Although, this was kind of shocking to me. Frenzy Plant did a ton of damage. Like a ton of damage. That was a lot. So I was not expecting that. 
we are going to be able to get a wild charge off on the Venusaur and then go down to a second Frenzy Plant. So then we're going to be able to bring in our Vigoroth. We still have a shield left. So Vigoroth versus Venusaur, as long as I have a shield, is very favorable. We're going to farm it up. And then if we had to use a shield, uh, I would use it. But in comes Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff is going to take a Body Slam. I'm trying to burn the final shield. And we get the shield. So instantly switch the Venusaur and then hit it with a Sludge Bomb. See, I'm much better at the Fruit Ninja game now. Get that excellent. Down goes Wigglytuff. So in comes his Vigoroth. And I did have a little bit of energy built up from overtapping. So overtapping isn't always a bad thing. And we're going to hit the excellent with the frenzy plant and we do have one shield left so in the one shield scenario Venusaur should be able to take it so we're gonna go ahead and shield here and beat it to the next frenzy plant but he gives up so we take the victory so I was very happy I won my jungle cup won the whole thing when undefeated I only lost one battle in one match so um, big shout out to Hero Vange, big shout out to Joe McMahon um, from the 100 Mill Club. He recommended the Magnazone Venusaur Vigoroth strategy um, where you would switch into Vigoroth, uh, you know, if you were, if your Venusaur had an unfavorable matchup to begin with. Um, and also Venusaur, you know, kind of charging up and saving a charge move. Uh, is very very effective so big shout out to those guys um, I will be back with some more videos um, working on the mirror cup right now I have no idea what we're gonna do um, for mirror cup so I'm kind of just doing a lot of the regionals battles so if you guys would like to eventually battle me I do have room on my friends list if you want to put your friend code in the comments below I can add you there and we can practice battle um, also on Instagram at let's go mummy dust and on Twitter at the mummy dust so if you guys want to message me on either of those I can go ahead and add you as a friend uh, and then last thing if you like the video please hit that thumbs up button and then um, you know you can like subscribe as well that would be really cool and turn on notifications and everything I'll make sure that I'm posting more videos for you guys so until next time see you around